You go in there, squeeze the trigger, a bunch of smoke. Wow, it smells like victory. On October 7th, a war broke out between Israel and Hamas. It is the largest war between the sworn enemies in decades, complete with airstrikes, ground invasions, hostage taking, and the threat of growing into a world war. And like every major war involving America's allies, the question has arisen. Will the A-10 Thunderbolt II get involved? The A-10 is a lethal beast in the sky that provides close air support like no other aircraft before it. But there's one after it looking to snatch the crown. The F-35 Lightning II, the most versatile and most intelligent fighter the world has ever seen. There's been a rivalry between these two American aircraft for years. The Israel-Hamas war could be the perfect theater to settle it once and for all. The A-10 versus the F-35, Thunder versus Lightning. Two contenders from two very different generations battling it out for close air support glory. The F-35 is relatively new, a fifth-generation stealth fighter that began entering service from 2015. The A-10's time in service dates as far back as 1977, which means a difference of almost four decades between the two. While the F-35 benefits from these decades of technological improvements, the A-10 was always an attack aircraft far ahead of its time, particularly as a close air support aircraft. It is the only American aircraft in history built from the ground up primarily for this role. And it shows. Packed with an offense suite that enables it to drill holes in metal faster than a caterpillar drill, a defense armor that gives it more lives than a cat, and an avionics suite that makes it intelligent enough to be mistaken for a Tesla product, the A-10 is the one attack aircraft that's never out of place in any mission that requires providing cover for troops. The aircraft was built around its main weapon, the 30 by 173 mm GAU-8 Gatling-style Avenger autocannon, which was developed specifically for the Warthog. The GAU-8 has a high muzzle velocity and a super high rate of fire that enables the cannon to fire 3,900 large depleted uranium armor-piercing shell rounds every minute. The A-10 is also armed with the AGM-65 Maverick air-to-surface missile. Guided by electro-optics and infrared, the Maverick missile allows target engagement at much greater ranges than the cannon and thus results in less risk from anti-aircraft systems for the A-10. In addition to these weapons, the A-10 wields a plethora of newer weapons including cluster bombs, Hydra-70 rockets, GPS and laser-guided bombs such as the GBU-39 small diameter bomb, Paveway series bombs, joint direct attack munitions, wind corrected munitions dispenser, AGM-154 joint standoff weapon glide bombs, and AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. The A-10 backs this impressive offense with just as impressive defense. After all, being so close to the battlefield grounds is sure to attract constant fire from anyone and anything that's got a weapon. To handle this fire, the A-10 features 1,200 pounds of titanium aircraft armor whose interior surface that's directly exposed to the pilot is covered by a multi-layer nylon spall shield to protect against shell fragmentation. This enables the A-10 and its pilot to survive direct hits from 23mm cannon fire, 57mm shell fragments, highly explosive explosives, and armor-piercing projectiles. The aircraft also features double redundant hydraulic flight systems and a mechanical system as a backup in case hydraulics are lost. The result of these is an A-10 that remains flying when one engine, one elevator, half of its tail and half of a wing have all been shot off. The F-35, on the other hand, isn't primarily a close air support aircraft. It's more of an everything fighter jet. It's built to be as versatile as a jet can be, earning a spot in virtually every type of mission including air-to-air -air warfare, air-to-ground warfare, sea dominance, air dominance, anything. In fact, the F-35 is currently being used by the US Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps. Building such a versatile fighter was no cheap task though. The F-35 development program remains the Pentagon's most expensive program to date, with a reported cost of $400 billion. 
The F-35 is the second fifth-generation fighter of the U.S., second to the less versatile but more air-dominating F-22 Raptor. And like every fifth-generation fighter, the F-35 heavily relies on its stealth capabilities, which manufacturer Lockheed Martin made sure to develop to jaw-dropping standards. The F-35 was designed from the ground up with stealth in mind. Its manufacturers aligned its edges, serrated its skin panels, and masked the engine with easy-to-maintain fiber matte skin for low observability. They also reduced infrared and visual signatures, enabled the reflection of radar waves, and used strict controls of radio frequency emitters, all playing their role in preventing aircraft detection and contributing to the F-35's ultra-tiny radar cross-section that's lower than that of a metal golf ball. The F-35 is powered by a single Pratt & Whitney F-135 low-bypass augmented turbofan, which provides 43,000 pound-force of thrust with afterburner. This engine thrusts the jet to a supersonic top speed of Mach 1.6, far faster than the Mach 0.6 of the A-10. However, the A-10 counters that with the fact that a primarily close-air support aircraft like the A-10 has little use for supersonic speeds since it's usually up against slow-moving troops or infantry on the ground. The rivalry between the A-10 and the F-35 began in 2014 when a Congress full of retired personnel that had either piloted the A-10 Warthog or been saved by it was told by the Air Force that their much-beloved fighter was now unsurvivable in today's battlefields, and so should be retired to free up manpower and $4.2 billion in funding for the F-35 Lightning II that would replace it. Congress's loyalty to the Warthog kicked into full gear, and they demanded that the Air Force prove that the F-35 could indeed effectively replace the Warthog. Congress also tasked the Air Force with upgrading the Warthog to the best it could be in order to give it a fair fighting chance. The Air Force did just that, feeding the Warthog with upgrades so many that they had to be added in different suites at different times, starting with Suite 8. Suite 8 came with the V-12 lightweight airborne recovery systems that allowed A-10 pilots to communicate more effectively with personnel on the ground, such as pararescue men and pilots whose planes had been shot down. The A-10 received longer-ranging standoff weapons that canceled out the need for A-10s to fly into the face of attacks before taking a shot, and indirectly made the F-35's attack-evading supermaneuverability seem an unnecessary luxury for close air support. Suite 9 came with a situational awareness pad integrated in the A-10 to receive digital position reports from JTAC personnel as opposed to pilots manually searching for them on the ground. The A-10 also received the ability to validate targets to prevent accidentally aiming at friendlies. The A-10's accuracy was enhanced by new pilot helmets known as Hybrid Optical-Based Inertial Tracker, or HOBBIT for short. The helmets come with a mounted sight that accurately responds to the pilot's head movements. Rounded up by Suite 10 and 11 upgrades, these were some of the upgrades that the A-10 received to get it up to speed with the times. Many would argue that the upgrades weren't necessary, though, because the A-10 has always been a far better close-air support than the F-35. From a more lethal cannon to a defensive armor that prevents it from being shot down, the A-10 is armed to the teeth with all it could need to provide ground support. Couple that with the fact that the F-35's design is focused on higher-end battles that makes the fighter being unable to fly or loiter as low as the A-10 can. So, while the U.S. Air Force seems fixated on retiring the A-10, the aircraft seems to be going nowhere soon except maybe Israel, to fight off the Hamas insurgency. A-10 in Israel It was the same conversation with the Russo-Ukraine war over a year ago, where Russia launched a full-scale attack on Ukraine. Russia has the largest tank fleet in the world, and the A-10, being the best tank buster aircraft in the world, was a likely contender for aircraft that the U.S. could send to aid Ukraine. With the Israel-Hamas war, it's happening again. The U.S. and Israel are strong allies. Hours after Hamas's strikes on Israel, the U.S. deployed the most powerful aircraft carrier in the world, the USS Gerald Ford, along with an entire armada of ships towards the region to protect Israel in case allies of Hamas, such as Iran or Lebanon, 
made the mistake of joining the fight. In addition to the carrier and supporting ships, there are speculations that the U.S. could send the A-10 to provide support to Israel against a mainly ground-based Hamas force. Without a doubt, the A-10 would be valuable to Israel in such a battle, and so these speculations do hold some weight. In fact, A-10s already arrived in the Middle East a month ago. However, there have been no official announcements from the Air Force to suggest that the planes would soon be flying into Israel. The A-10 Thunderbolt II has been saving lives for almost five decades, and it could be set to do so once again in the new Israel-Hamas war. While the question arises as to whether it's the best close air support aircraft in the world, or if it's second best to the F-35, two things are certain. One, it is jaw-droppingly good at what it does. And two, it wants you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a like. So do that now and thanks for watching.